Well, there has been a fresh outbreak of violence in Zaki Biam Axis of Benue State, with the police public relations officer, ASP Moses Yamu, confirming the brutal burning of three persons to death at Kassar village in Okum local government area. According to the police spokesperson, preliminary investigations indicate that the attack is a reprisal from the earlier Zaki Biam Yam market attack on Monday. Four flats were burned down in the incident, one of which is said to belong to a gang member who allegedly drove one of the Helix vans used in the Zaki Biam Yam market attack. Meanwhile, security operatives have been drafted to the affected area, which took place on Friday morning. In Berlin, two days after the recovery of the body of a medical doctor, Orwell Orji, who committed suicide last Sunday, two suspects were today rescued along the same axis in Lagos, while one of the suspects, a 71-year-old Abigail Oguinka, a food vendor, claimed well, that he had collected money from a microfinance bank and had failed on the weekly refund for two weeks. The second suspect, alleged to be a textile dealer in Lagos Island, had attempted to jump into the lagoon from the Warushiki end before her rescue. She's alleged to have been indebted to her foreign partners. Make it clear that we're not close our eyes to ensuring that the law take its course in um, some of these cases. Um, we look at the circumstances, we'll take them firstly through therapy. Um, I have asked that they should get the uh, police clinic to get psychologists, um, people that would take them through uh, uh, the post depression period to punch out whatever is in their mind but that is not to say that the law should not take its course i, I would ensure that um, would use the law to stop that in addition to making sure that um, um, we prevent these things are difficult to prevent though well let's join ivy clem who is at our buddha studios and she has more stories hello ivy Hello, Millicent. The Court of Appeal sitting in Akure, the Ondo State Capital, has nullified the impeachment of a former deputy governor of the state, Mr. Ali Olanusi. The court held that the impeachment of Mr. Olanusi in 2015 by the Ondo State House of Assembly was not done in accordance with provisions of the law. Justice Mohamed Danjuma also held that the former deputy governor was not accorded fair hearing before his impeachment. The judge ordered the restoration of all rights and benefits due to Mr. Lanusi from the time of his impeachment to the end of his tenure. Speaking to newsmen in the ruling, the former deputy governor commended the judiciary and the people of Ondo State who stood by him during the legal battles. I have to thank the judiciary that is improving Nigeria. I have to thank the judiciary. This will go a long that way. Is improving in Nigeria. This type of exercise. This will go a long way. Can you just decide to use this type of exercise? Uh, executive powers to punish your colleagues. We enjoy the same ticket. If it were a similar country, such thing will not happen. Because what is the offense? They compile many files they did not see one file where they where i committed a uh, regiment offense yet he said he would do jankara and he went on to do that jankara too and all of it was trying to patch him supporting him dragging the case which could have been settled within three to four months at the best six not two years but thank God the truth has prevailed. The Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has fixed May the 15th for its ruling on two preliminary objections arising from the takeover of Arik Air Limited by the Assets Management Corporation, Amcon. Amcon had on February 8, 2017, announced that it had taken over Arik Air Limited. The corporation said it took over Arik Air Limited to save the airline from collapse and in the best interest of the general public, workers, creditors, and other interest groups in the aviation sector. A legal practitioner, Mr. Olusheye Opan Sonia San, was then appointed as the receiver manager of Arik Air Limited following its takeover from Ancom. But four persons who were aggrieved by the court order filed a preliminary objection through their lawyer, Mr. Babachide Jide Koku, 
SAN. The accused Mr. Opasonya and the lawyer representing AMCOM, Professor Koyinshola Ajayi, of engaging in professional misconduct and urged the court to void all the processes so far filed by Ajayi on behalf of AMCON and Opasonya. The grounds of the objections was that Ajayi and Opasonya are both lawyers practicing the law firm of Olaiwuni Ojayi LP. After hearing both preliminary objections on Friday, Justice Idris adjourned till May 15, 2017 for his ruling. The Yenegoa and Sagbama branch of the Nigeria Bar Association are raising alarm over what they call the denial of justice to the people of the region. The Federal High Court located in Yenogua Bielsa State, have been under lock and key for six months because their judges are facing trial at the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission for alleged criminal offenses. So the implication of this is that all cases pending in the two courts, including that of the abduction of Esiruru, have been put on hold. For weeks now, it's been difficult to get justice from the Federal High Court and the Industrial Court located in Yenogua Bielsa State. The premises of the two courts deserted without the usual influx of lawyers and other litigants. All legal matters are now on hold. Reason, the two judges are facing criminal cases at the EFCC and the Chief Judge of the Federal High Court and the President of the Industrial Court are yet to assign judges for the two courts and the Nigerian Bar Association is raising an alarm. For criminal trials, we have a lot of inmates who are in uh, detention who cannot have their matters heard because of uh, non-sitting of the courts. It's causing so much hardship to litigants people under remand, and even to us legal practitioners. Equally worried by the situation is the state government, and the attorney general of the state believes that it is clear denial of justice and an affront on the rights of the people. If these cases cannot be addressed, before you know, there will be security problems. If every day people's properties are destroyed, they can't have access to redress in court. One of the cases affected by this is the case of Ese Ru, who was allegedly adopted by one Yunusa and taken to Kanu, and the matter can no longer continue for now. Her father, Charles Aruru, is asking the authorities concerned to do something about the situation to enable the family get justice. When we come, if the court is not sitting, and by now we have not... Uh... Uh, we have finished the, the case by now because uh, my daughter is still under. Uh, you have to finish his uh, exam cross examination. You have only done it twice, I remain once. You have not finished the cross examination. For the Bielsa state government, the only way this can be resolved is for the relevant authorities to assign new judges to preside over the courts. While waiting for the conclusion of the investigation, they should. Uh, post other judges to come and uh, take over the functions of uh, the judges that have been investigated. Most of the parties concerned here will prefer a situation where new judges are assigned to man the courts while the trial of the accused presiding officers continue. That way, justice for others will not be seen to have been obstructed. And that's it from Abuja. Back to Lagos with Millicent. Many thanks, Ivy. Well, the Cross River State Government has confirmed the death of a couple from suspected food poisoning in Goja. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Inyang Ashibong, told Channels Television that 40 others have been hospitalized at the General Hospital of Goja following a suspected case of food poisoning by a vendor. Dr. Ashibong, who described the incident as a disaster, said the symptoms displayed by the victims include vomiting, foaming in the mouth, body weakness and spitting of blood. She said her ministry is on top of the situation to finding out the root cause of this incident and has dispatched a team made up of epidemiologists, doctors, community health workers and other related health staff to the affected communities. And when the news at 10 returns, World Bank approves $200 million loan to support federal government's efforts, and that's at boosting small and mid-scale farming in the country. That's on business. Join us again.